Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am the Sam, the Bean's doing his thing, so you might hear him in the background, and today we are talking about the French Colonial. The French Colonial first came over to the United States with the French colonists in the 1600s, and are primarily found in more French areas, such as Louisiana, and smaller French settlements, such as St. Louis and Louisville. I feel like there's a bit of a theme with the names here, but we'll keep going. The French Colonial is one of few styles that was built primarily in the 16 and 1700s, right among that same group of colonials that we've built several of so far here on this channel that did not see a sort of resurgence in the 20th and 21st centuries. The main downside of this as far as today's video is concerned is that just means there wasn't as much material for me to gather from as I usually have for builds for this series. Typically, when you look for a home, you'll find the original style, some of the history behind it, what people have done with it more recently, you'll find newer constructions and floor plans, and that was pretty difficult to come by for the French colonial style. However, it's still beautiful and I wanted to build it for you, so we are building a French colonial today with the best information I was able to find, and if you know anything better than me or if you have some good resources on stuff like this, please let me know in the comments below along with all of your suggestions, corrections, and questions. Some of the things we do know though is that there was almost always a very very deep double deck. Um, this was called a gallery, only in a French accent, which I'm not going to do. This double gallery may be just isolated to the front of the build, or it may be wrap all the way around, or anything in between. The walls are always quite tall, and most of the windows were quite tall as well, as well as being multi-paned. Shutters are quite common. And as far as doors go, usually most of the doors would be tall, narrow, and double doors that have glass panes in them. You probably know this better as French doors. Way, way back when these French colonials were first being built, well, the very, very first ones were built as if the colonists were still in France, which did not hold up to the weather very well. So this is more based on sort of their second round, and their second attempt was much better. Traditionally, the first level would be either servants' quarters, or later on it would be turned into garage or storage area, as flooding was quite common. And then the second level would be primarily either where the sort of master of the house lived, or again later on, bedrooms, secondary living spaces, or possibly even the whole house would be like on the second floor with a large above ground basement on the first floor. Brick and stucco are the most common siding options, although siding and paneling and stone even in some areas can definitely be used. So with all that being said, we are going to go ahead and jump right into the game and start building. I'm starting off on a 20 by 30 in Willow Creek today. I'm actually building right next to the library because if you saw my Gothic Revival build, I talked a little bit about how I think a lot of the Sims 4 builds are supposed to be one style but don't carry it out super great, and I think the library is supposed to be a converted French colonial. French colonial are very common in the New Orleans sort of area, and I believe Willow Creek is supposed to have that same general feel, by extension also New Crest and Magnolia Promenade. I'll be sticking with just the base game today, and we'll see how my build compares to the library. I'm going to start with the wraparound porch. I'm going to take my little flat square here and put it one tile in from the side, bring it across so that'll be a total of 18 tiles, and then bring it down so it'll be 13. The reason I'm doing it like this is because if you want to add a curved corner to your build, you're going to want to start that now by grabbing this rounded deck and placing it here. Of course, delete that and then placing your rounded room here so that you have three tiles in on either side. Rounded walls are optional, but if you want to explore a little bit with the rounded wall options, this is a great place to do it. I'll only be adding the one, the rest of the corners I'll just leave square. Now I'm just going to expand this room until it's three tiles away from this side and three tiles away from this side. This is going to be a pretty small build today, but like I said in the intro, I was really lacking resources for this one, so I'm doing the best I can. But the French colonial was still important to American architecture, even if it's not as beloved as some of the other styles, so I still wanted to do it with you guys today. With that being said, we're going to copy this whole thing and place it up top. So we should be able to copy this and place it, copy this and place it, and copy our room and place it. Your first floor can be either medium or tall wall height. I'm going to stick with medium, and your second wall can be short or medium. I'm, again, going to go with medium. To knock out the floor plan real quick, we're going to go in five tiles from this side and just draw a little wall here. We're going to add stairs one tile in from the end, and then draw a nice family bathroom in this space here. This space is going to be divided to be a dining room and a kitchen. You may notice a general lack of hallways. That's pretty common with this build style from what I gathered. And if you ever want to add more rooms, you just sort of add them onto the sides. For reasons I'm not 100% sure of, this is supposed to help with airflow and maintaining temperature, which is really important in a hot, humid area like these homes were typically built in. Upstairs, I'm going to start by drawing a wall here, and this will be split into two bedrooms. I'm going to add a little room right here and another wall here. This will split into two probably kids' bedrooms or something like that, a master bedroom with an attached bath, 
and of course another bathroom downstairs with a living space, dining room, and kitchen. So again, a very small build, but if you want to expand it, you literally just start making the rooms bigger, start adding on extra rooms, and you should be good to go. Now, a note on the deck or gallery or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a whole 360 around the build. At the very least, you should really have the double gallery at the front of the build, which is just a double layer deck here. All the wrapping around one, two, or even all three other sides really depends on the overall style you're going for. Again, curved walls are optional, but they are fun. And if you're paying attention to the reference images, there are actually quite a few examples of this, um, typically more on corner lots, as this would like be the main entrance. That's not where we're going to put our entrance today, but it's a cute little thing to add if you want. Now this whole house will be elevated up a bit on a foundation. Depending on the area, you may have a lower foundation like this or a higher foundation like this. The main thing to consider when you're looking at a foundation is, is this area likely to flood? If yes, more foundation. If no, do what you want. In some cases, the build is directly on the ground like this, and this level is used for storage, like a garage or basement. And you'd actually have stairs going directly up to the second level, which would be the main level of actually living. This would be more common in areas that really do flood quite heavily. I'm going to get rid of these fences for now by holding control and drawing over them with the wall tool. Now for the roof, we're actually going to take our platform tool and draw a platform that's going to extend over the deck below. So you'll go out three tiles diagonally from one corner, and extend it three tiles out diagonally from the other corner and that should cover everything. By using a platform I can then grab this floor trim. Well I wanted it there, I meant to place it here. There we go. And I can grab a platform trim that also has a little bit of detail on it and make a really nice sort of resting point for my roof. We've done this in a handful of builds, notably the Greek Revival and the Georgian. I'm going to go with the hip roof today, although this could potentially also be a sideways gable, which just means the open faces would be on the sides like this. And you want the pitch to be about as high as one of your walls. Pretty high pitch. But now you can see how it's nicely supported, and yet the eaves still look like they're quite, um, quite significantly overhanging. You could of course skip that step and just pull the eaves out a bit more, but I like this look better. A very narrow small dormer or two is pretty common in these build styles as well. You can add that by just drawing a room and pulling it back until it disappears into the roof. For whatever reason, my wall keeps disappearing. There we go. And then you can just top that with a gable. Make sure that it blends in. And we'll put a window there in just a second. First, let's talk about siding options. We could do a lot of things here. Oh, I'm gonna stick with base game though. We could go with some bricks, siding, maybe even stone in some areas, and even plaster. Now you may have noticed that I'm actually using colors today. This is one of the few builds we've actually done so far in this series that it's very common to have bright colors. A lot of what we've done have been very neutral tones and earth tones, but I mean, French construction, New Orleans, St. Louis, colors. Colors are totally fine here. I kind of like this green, so I'm going to keep it. I'm going to use the beveled out roof trim on my roof pieces and just grab some shingles. Usually I do doors and windows next, but we're actually going to do columns and the rest of this railing because where we put our doors and windows is going to depend slightly on our um, railing and column sort of organization. The contrast wooden fencing is sort of the default fencing that places with these round decks. It's very simple. We could definitely use that one. And if you want to go for something a little bit fancier, you could try this composite fencing the balustrade fencing, and if you're going for one of the later constructions, something with a little bit of iron flare like this would work really well. The iron decorations weren't really common until the very end of the French colonial sort of run that it had here in the States. It was popularized by the Victorian home movement, um, and they used a lot of iron decorations in those builds, and the French, of course, always wanting to be up to date on everything, adapted it into a lot of their designs. So if you're going for something a little bit fancier, you can run with that. As far as columns go, I have all of them out right now, as you can see. You could go for something a little bit more on the square side, like this cottage living column or this base game one. I saw several columns that also sort of looked like this, down to the midway decoration. Round or kind of round pillars are options as well. You don't want to go too ornate, too modern, too Greek, or too industrial. And if you decide to carry the French colonial to a new land, using the columns of the world is a great way to start bringing in that style. We are at a base game world with a base game budget, so we are going to stick with a base game column set. Also, I missed two pieces of fences over here. How embarrassing. I quite like this column that the library has, so I'm going to use that one. In their initial construction, these builds were extremely symmetrical. However, later constructions can have the entrance more toward one side or the other, which is what we're going to end up with today. So starting from this side, I'm going to place my columns every three tiles until I run out of space, and do the same thing on the back. Now these sides are not divisible by three, so I'm going to go in three, and then do two, and then three in the middle again, like that. Same thing over here, except 
ghost column over on this side. And that exact same column arrangement upstairs. You can hold shift to place multiple columns without having to reselect, by the way. And I think the columns are really what make or break this build style. Again, you don't have to have the whole wraparound porch. You could stick it on anywhere from the one to the four sides of this build. I like it being all the way around though. I think it's really nice. You could also add a spandrel if you want. I think the best option that comes in the base game is the budget spandrel, which of course doesn't want to place for me right now because that would just be too darn convenient. All right, well, you can add a spandrel if you want, but apparently I can't, so that's fine. I'm going to add my stairs just to one side here, and this is where we're going to have our front door. Believe it or not, the main door style that was used in this build was a double door that was quite narrow, and the doors tended to be glass. Most people call this a French door. I know, crazy. However, we don't have any medium height French doors that are like, good. We have this super fancy one. I don't really want to use that though. You could, but what I'm actually going to do is make my own French doors. If you would also like to make your own French doors, you are going to have to turn on move objects, which is control shift C and then BB dot move objects and enter. You should get that confirmation code. If not, retype it or type BB dot move objects on. And now what I'm going to do is grab this window door and I'm going to hold alt so that I can drag it so that the edge of my frame is just on that dotted line and then rotate my door direction by pressing my comma key and overlap it just a bit there. Again, by holding alt to slide. Unfortunately, the frames are slightly different depths, but whatever. So if you look closely at it, it looks kind of silly, but if you just zoom out and look at it from here, it's quite nice. I just realized I forgot to play test this door, so I don't know if it'll actually work or not. All right, sweet. So at least one of the doors does work, which is great. All right, let's talk about windows. Ideally, I'd go for something in the medium wall height category, just because the French do not settle for small windows. They want big windows. Typically for our colonials, we've been going with this one, which has the shutters that of course we need and the double hung sash, which is historically accurate. However, like I just said, we want big windows and we want them to have a lot of panes. So this is not gonna work. That's not enough panes. I would actually recommend going for something like Tall Order or The Clapper. I'm gonna go with The Clapper here because I have unlimited money. Now, but if you're looking for a more budget-friendly but still fairly historically accurate option, you can go with this one. It even sort of matches little door frame detail there, which is adorable. These are heavily windowed builds, so I am going to place these in between sort of every column area, and we'll have to come back and address this uh, round wall in a second. We may have to adjust the kitchen window as usual, and at least a couple of these windows will be replaced with French doors. For now though, to get the general look and make sure we have everything where we want it, we'll just stick with the windows. If we actually search by curved walls, we have octopane, the double hung window, or the shutter to think, which are all very small, we don't like those. So what I'm actually going to do, since I have move objects on, I can do this is use this narrow outlook window, which is kind of pretty much just this one without the shutters. And I can actually place this right on that curve. It looks a little funky, but curved walls are prone to glitching regardless. So we might as well have some nice windows. Lastly, for our gable, we could do something small and cute like this, something with a little more pizzazz. I'm just going to go for this guy. Taking a look at the inside of the build, I think this would be a good place for some doors. And wouldn't you know it, we have some. I think I've used these in every build so far. I would also like some doors out of the kitchen, and I know I'm going to have to replace at least a couple of these windows anyway to get counters in here. So I think I will place the doors out this way, as well as replace this window for that maximum airflow. And these windows, in order to fit counters in, I'm going to replace with these guys. Upstairs, I'd really like for each bedroom to be able to walk out onto the deck, and since we have the doors on this side downstairs, might as well put them over here upstairs as well. Now, you don't necessarily have to stick with white for everything. I've been going with white. Fences, columns, window frames, all that stuff. You can go for something more brightly colored, or if you have a white exterior, going for something black would look really nice and add some really nice high contrast. I like the look of the white, but it is not necessary. Add some last little doors over here for the grown-ups bedroom. And it's kind of funny that we have windows on either side of this hall, but no actual like light in there. Another thing to consider inside is whether or not you want a fireplace. Even the most hot and humid climates typically had fireplaces. I mean, it's a colonial. It kind of has to have a fireplace. So I am going to get rid of this window, at least temporarily, to put in a fireplace. Once again, I'm going to go with white and sort of center it on this wall. And I think I'll use the same window and just place one sort of on either side. This of course means we need a chimney. I like sort of doing chimneys as rooms. That's a little too tall. And then doing a half wall at the top. I prefer to do it this way because then I can match this paint to my foundation or whatever else I may have and still stick a little chimney in there for smoke and whatever. And speaking of foundation, I am going to go for somewhat of a brick. Now that I have that picked, I can take that same brick and apply it to my chimney. 
While we're talking about paint, let's discuss interior colors. Again, if we're talking about the very original constructions, they tended to have plaster outside and timber framed inside, which is stuff like this, uh, which you can find in the Get Together pack. This would be the closest base game option, so you could totally go with something like that. However, modern times call for modern measures, and sticking with something a little bit more formal with some paneling and wallpaper could be lovely, or just some plain old paint, with or without the crown molding or even the baseboard. Neutrals are always an option, but so are colors. Go with what your heart most desires. Mine does not desire a pink and mint combination. Cute, but not for me. And as far as floor goes, wood, which is going to get a little bit funky with the curved uh, rooms because the curved room only lets it go in a particular direction. But wood would be fine. You could put some stone or tile in the kitchen space if you wanted to. I'm also gonna change out my stairs to match. Inside between rooms, if you don't need privacy, you can use, of course, French doors once again. Or if you want something a little more simple, an archway will serve you fine. I don't know if the interior doors tended to be paneled or not, so go with what you want. Upstairs, you should be able to place doors here, 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 and then in here as well for this bathroom. Let's lay out a kitchen real quick. Kitchens tended to be at the back of the home. Of course, newer constructions, you can put the kitchen wherever you want. Some people like to have them in front. Some people prefer to have them in the back. This one's in the back though. If you want your build to feel older and more established, going for wooden cabinets is a great option. If you want it to feel a little bit more up to date, you can lighten and brighten it by bringing in some of these more contemporary sort of streamlined counters. You can use this little gear icon to access the custom counter pieces, which I really like using. They're not necessary, but I like being able to end my counter when I want to end it. And doing something like this will leave you plenty of room for a trash can. With this bathroom, one of the reasons that I added this space behind the stairs is, first of all, it's an awkward space. Secondly, you can really easily put a shower in there and it looks like it belongs. And a toilet next to the window is always a great choice. I think it's so silly that The Sims can't actually like see through windows. You'd think that'd be a pretty easy thing to code, but no, I don't know, it's weird. If you want your stairs to feel a little bit safer, you can add a little fence around the side like that. And this bathroom is significantly larger, so I'll probably want to add a bathtub here. I'm gonna go uh, kick my household out so that I can have money again. There we go. So anyway, I'm gonna add a bathtub to this one. That'll work just fine. Oh, for the wraparound deck, I forgot to floor that. You could just use whatever you're using inside. Although typically, if I do that, I like to use a slightly lighter color because it's been like weathered by the sun or something. Another cute thing you can do is put a little light inside the stormer so that your window glows at night. So yeah, I don't know, that's an option. What if you want to sort of modernize this build, make it feel a little bit more contemporary and up to date? The first thing you'll probably want to do is switch out your fence railing for something a little bit more simple, same with the columns, and possibly simplify and streamline your windows a bit as well and change it out for something with not quite as many panes or even no panes, well, one pane, whatever, um, and no shutters same with the door. Inside you could open up the space a bit more by just adding arches everywhere or even opening up the whole first floor altogether. And it's always wall paint goes a long way. And now we can talk about landscaping. Again, I don't really have a lot of data for this, but one cute thing that I did see was a lot of sort of like white picket fences in the front yard sort of thing. So I'm going to grab this fencing and sort of draw myself a cute little front yard here. Add a cute little gate. I was going to add this tree, but it's clipping in, but I could make it smaller. Using landscaping from the world is always a good way to go if you're not 100% sure what to do. Another nice default thing is to add a nice tree and a little bench. Add a little path going to it, which you can do by starting with dirt to paint the path, and then going on top with another brush to put in some gravel or stone or whatever you may want. I like doing the dirt first because I feel like it creates a nicer edge, sort of blending into the ground. And then once you have that, you can just sort of landscape the gaps. This fern thing and this fern thing are this low-lying palm plant and the green fern. So we can use those as our shrub options. As always, I recommend landscaping with move objects on. It just makes things easier. And you can resize using the bracket keys to add a little bit more variety, shape, texture, all that good stuff. Another good way to add texture is through rocks, which I typically like to color to sort of match my world. And you'll always wanna add some color with flowers. You can go for some big flowers like these, again, resizing for variety, or something a little shorter for some filler. Whatever you go for, don't forget to add terrain paint underneath it, as well as under the foundation of your build. And if you wanna use a really small, really soft brush, you can put a little bit of a shadow under your fence as well. If you overpaint any areas, you can just clean it up with a soft eraser. For your backyard, I recommend adding some stairs close to wherever your other doors are. We have some along this side, so I'll add some stairs here as well as directly out of the sort of family room here. And then for your backyard, you can fence it in or not, add a pool, gazebo, 
family activity stuff, bee boxes, garden spaces, whatever your sims are going to need. The rest of the, well they're not homes, but the rest of the buildings on this block do have a pretty tall fence in the backyard, so if you wanted to sort of blend in you could add one of those. And adding a little bit of light dirt at the bottom of your stairs can help them feel a little more used. Alright, let's do a recap. This French Colonial is the first build in this series so far that I've really struggled to find the amount of resources I prefer to have for videos like this on, so if I missed anything, if you have any corrections or feedback, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. From what I do know though, the French Colonial walls tend to be pretty tall and windows are tall as well. The French door is pretty much a must for this style as well as sort of a small dormer at the top, you may see one, two, or even three. The wraparound deck doesn't have to always be wraparound, but at the very least you want a nice deep double layer deck on the front of your build. Curved walls, again, not entirely necessary, but a fun option that is historically accurate, so figured might as well throw it in. The outside of your build can be siding, stucco, plaster, brick, even stone, depending on the area it's constructed in. Upstairs will have the majority of the bedrooms as well as potentially secondary living spaces. The roof is going to be a fairly high either open-ended gable with the ends on this side or a hip roof, which is what we've used here. And I think that's about all I have for you guys today. First off, who did it better? Do you like my French Colonial or the library? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've missed any uploads in this series, I've put them all in this convenient little playlist here for you called Building Like a Nerd. That is the title of the series. We just go into way too much detail, build houses, it's a good time. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, I recommend subscribing and hitting that like button. I'd like to offer another huge thank you for helping hit 500 subscribers by the end of October. That was my goal and we hit it halfway through, which literally I never expected. So I am just super excited about that and I'm very, very much looking forward to continuing this series in January. First, of course, we have to finish up October. So thank you so much for building with me today, and I look forward to building with you again tomorrow. Bye!